What's up you guys, my name is Trenton. Show you guys around my service truck really quick. Um, I posted a couple videos on TikTok and some people really liked it and they were asking for videos of my truck. So here it is. Here is my 2004 Dodge Ram 3500 with a 5.9 Cummins. We got a three inch leveling kit. It's a uh, rough country. I had it powder coated in a metallic red. You can kind of see the flake in it. Looks pretty cool. I gotta tie that wiring up right there for the rock lights. I haven't quite done that yet, but it's another thing. We have 20 rock lights on this truck, uh, three in each wheel well, the uh, doors on each side, and we have two up underneath where the bumper should be, which I don't have one yet, and then two on the back of the frame. I'm probably forgetting some, but I don't remember exactly where the other ones went. So I'll give you guys a quick walk around really quick. Um, so that way you can kind of see this thing, get a perspective of what it looks like. Just got done washing it. Show you guys how far these back wheels stick out. It's absolutely ridiculous. I love it. Check that out. We got like probably, man, I don't even know. Here's my hand long ways. So I'd say probably a good eight inches, probably nine inches. Crazy. So a lot of people had questions about the wheels that are on this truck. Um, these are custom cut 24 inch um, semi wheels. So basically the people that I had make them are from Riverside, California. Big shout out to JK Motorsports. I'll put a link to their uh, website in the description of this video. Um, great guys to work with. They are so quick um, and you know, they'll help you with any problems you may run into. So I'll give you the rundown on these wheels. These are 24 inch wheels that they get as uh, blank aluminum wheels. They are not cut. And basically what they do is they drill in your exact lug pattern. So with this truck, it's, it's an eight on six and a half lug pattern and uh, it's direct bolt. So you don't have to run any adapters. Um, however, in the rear, I did have to run a two inch spacer on each side. Reason being is because the wheels are so wide that it actually rubbed my leaf springs. I had to space it out a little bit away from the leaf springs. Other than that, um, these wheels, I mean, they look phenomenal. Um, and I like the fact that there's no adapters. I feel a lot safer without having them, not to mention it's a lot cheaper not having to run adapters as well. You can see we have these spikes right here. These spikes are actually threaded onto a plastic stud that is pounded through the original 10 lug hole. Um, so these are called Phantom 10 lug wheels. Um, so it kind of gives you that look of a semi truck uh, rim, but it's actually direct bolt. So very cool. So when I first got this truck, um, it was from North Dakota and it was all white. It was a ranch truck and it was absolutely thrashed, uh, dents everywhere. The bed that came on, it was a service bed, but it was just completely destroyed. None of the latches or locks worked. So I couldn't leave any tools in it. Just kind of defeated the purpose of even having a service bed at that point. Um, so I went ahead and I found this bed on Facebook marketplace down in Ventura, California. Uh, this was a LA County fire, uh, fire bed and it came off of a like late nineties, early two thousands, uh, Chevy Silverado 3,500, um, had to make a couple modifications to make it work on this frame. I had to notch out the, um, show you guys really quick. I had to notch out the, uh, boxes in the back to clear the leaf spring perches. So I got my straps in here, but so basically what I did was I notched out the back of the box and then I boxed it back in. Um, I wasn't really too concerned with filling all of this because the only thing that I keep back here is straps and uh, some fluid, jumper cables, miscellaneous stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not like it's tools in there that are gonna be getting rusted. Um, I just wanted to hurry up and get this thing done so that way I can get on the road and start making some money. Basically, I got the bed and I had it, uh, I had the paint scanned on it to see what color it was and then I had the truck painted to match the bed because the, the bed has pretty decent paint on it. You know, it's got some scratches here and there, but um, definitely in pretty decent shape for how old it is. So I decided to run with the red and I am so happy I did because red and chrome, I feel like you cannot go wrong with that combo. It's classy. It absolutely catches people as, uh, people's eye. And with being a mobile mechanic, trying to pr promote your own business, um, 
you know, getting attention is definitely a plus, especially if you're gonna have a logo on your truck. So I plan on putting logos on the truck with my phone number. Um, not entirely sure on what I'm gonna name my company yet. I do have a business license, but it's just under my name um, because I wasn't sure again on what I wanted to call the business. So if you guys have any ideas, my last name is Bowers, B-O-W-E-R-S, and I'd love to incorporate my last name into the business name somehow. Um, so if you guys have any ideas, please help me out with that. Put it in the uh, comments. That would help me so much because I'm so indecisive with things. But yeah, let's start looking at tools. I'm going to start out with my main compartment over here. Now, I filled this truck up with Harbor Freight stuff. I have a small selection of Snap-on stuff, uh, like Snap-on picks. This is a really nice set. I really like these. Um, you know, just standard wrenches. Uh, then I have my... Um, combination wrench set I uh, got some you know stubby wrenches of metric and standard right there it's a pretty nice set um, some screwdrivers not the best they're kind of crappy but it does the job uh, I got some long extensions right there oil filter wrench back there uh, I got a let me see all this stuff's gonna fall out I got a Pittsburgh uh, breaker bar right here half inch drive love this thing super strong so open this drawer i got my miscellaneous pliers um some strippers um some doyle basically replica um nipex pliers but i mean honestly they work just as good as my nipex pliers so can't complain about that um come over here got these two uh three eighths drive ratchets there's a swivel heads you know, to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of the non-locking swivel heads. I'm a big fan of the locking because when you're trying to tighten something, this thing just keeps on wanting to like f flop on you and it's just not really my favorite, but I feel like I'll get used to it. Um, but you know, they are good for some things. Over here, we have my quarter inch drive sockets, standard and metric deep, standard and metric shallow. Um, they're all six point drive. I am not a fan of 12 point, uh, 12 point sockets. So now we have all of my 3 8 drive sockets. Um, I have my metric standard right there, all of my long Allens, and then I have short Allens and metric and standard as well. And I have some half inch drive sockets right here. And uh, I believe these are half inch drive right there as well. So pretty much all my smaller sockets for my hand tools right there can pretty much do whatever I need to do with those. Uh, more wrenches. Uh, it goes up to 26 millimeter. Uh, then two crescent wrenches. I have this Icon half inch drive ratchet here, which again, it is not a locking head. I wish it was, but this thing is really comfortable in the hands. Feels just like a snap on ratchet. Um, I definitely recommend getting Icon ratchets, but if I were you, I honestly would really go with locking flex head if you can. Uh, I got some Icon um, adapters here goes up to looks like three quarter to half inch uh adapter these are super handy to have and then i have here a three quarter to one inch adapter um yeah that is three quarter well, second guessing myself um i like this hammer but not as much as snap-on's version of this um but this definitely does get the job done got a cheap little harbor freight um dead blow some swivels uh and then again some more icon stuff this is uh all of my extensions oh yeah we got some blue point uh filter wrenches here these are super nice i love this set if you can get a hold of them um ofw 4kt if you're a mechanic get these i freaking love them lock this thing up so now on to the second compartment here I bought this to bleed a clutch, ended up not needing it, but these things are great for testing vacuum and bleeding brakes, clutches, etc. Um, right here we have a Pittsburgh socket set. I believe this is one inch drive. Oh, this is gonna be fun trying to hold this open. So it goes up to like three and a half inch socket. It's pretty big to show you compared to my hand. So there's my hand, pretty, pretty huge. I got that for um, doing cylinder reseals uh, because, you know, breaking off the nut 
that's on the back of the cylinder rod. Uh, then here, we have this twin set of half inch drive sockets. Now this set is freaking awesome. Goes up to inch and a quarter. Uh, it's got all of your shallow standard. It's got all of your shallow metric all the way up to 24. Um, and then in the deep, it goes up to, uh, what is it? 24 as well. I do recommend this. I think this was like 168 or something of that sort, but it comes with extensions, a swivel. Like this set's freaking well, well, well worth the money. You get a lot for how much you pay. So let's close. So instead of getting regular pry bars with the plastic handles, I opted out for these here. It's kind of nice because they have an awl on one end. You know, you could use it for putting pins in or bolts or whatever in equipment. And then on the other side, it has the, uh, the pry bar on it. Um, they're pretty strong, probably stronger than a pry bar in my opinion. Um, and so far I've really liked them. Um, haven't, uh, used them a whole, whole lot yet. I have a, I don't know what you would call this, like a chain strap ratchet or chain strap. I don't even know what you would call this thing, but I use these for taking off gland caps on uh, hydraulic cylinders. Definitely recommend having those cause you can use them for all kinds of stuff. So, from there, let's move to my other Pittsburgh socket sets. This is a three-quarter drive, both of these sets are. This one goes up to 38 millimeter, um, and then this one goes up to inch and a half. Honestly, being in a service truck, it's really important to have everything that you're ever going to really need, and it's hard to do that because tools are expensive and you're not always gonna know exactly what you're gonna need. You're always gonna have to buy something. Um, but with doing mobile stuff, you can't really borrow tools from coworkers because you don't have coworkers. It's just you out there alone. Um, and it's better to have the tool and not use it a whole lot rather than not have it, not be able to complete a job, not be able to you know, get paid for it. You wanna be able to accept any job that comes your way because that's how you get more clients and in the end, that's how you make more money get out my blue point set so this set right here is very expensive in my opinion but at the same time i think it's worth it you get a lot of good stuff um you get pretty much every single torx bit you'll ever need um i haven't really seen a torx that is bigger than what's in this set i don't think uh it goes up to T60, maybe I have, I mean, but it's not super common. Look at that thing, it's as big as my index finger. Um, and then the Allens goes up to three quarter. I know you'll see sometimes some, some Allens that are bigger than this, but that's pretty big. So it's gonna be pretty rare occasions. Close this thing up. Toss it back in there. So, next thing is going to be my Hercules um, Impact. It is half inch drive. I got a dual bank charger. And then in this compartment, I have the actual Impact itself. Um, so, I usually use a DeWalt Impact half inch drive. Um, and I'm going to say right now, I think this one's probably better. I haven't really used this thing a whole lot yet. I've only really used it to take off... Um, I think one wheel and then I used it for a transmission jack that I have that you raise with the uh, half inch drive you know you can use a ratchet or a impact but it's got all the different settings DeWalt doesn't even have this um, it's got the automatic torque or whatever like the Milwaukee does one two three so you can kind of torque lug nuts with it um, so there's that I got two batteries um, Again, I haven't really used this thing a whole lot, so I'm not really too sure how long the battery lasts. So I will do a, you know, like an update video with that. Got a test light. Um, I just washed my truck, so I use a metal pot for, um, as like a soap bucket or whatever you want to call it. Close this door up. Come on now. There we go. Moving on around to this door. 
already kind of showed you guys the rundown on this, but I have my jumper cables. Um, this right here, just like one of the Napa cardboard boxes for organizing and stuff. Um, I keep like old seals and stuff or extra seals that uh, came with hydraulic cylinder resale kits. I carry a couple jugs of coolant. Uh, I just put some car wash soap in there because you know, every once in a while if my truck gets super dirty, I want it to look presentable and nice. So, you know, I'll go wash my truck at the self-wash pressure washing station. Um, I got a cinch right um, ratcheting strap in there and then I have four tie downs that I just bought. In this compartment, I have my, um, my vacuum that I use for evacuating AC systems. Uh, works really good at Tarver Freight. I haven't had any problems with this thing. I recommend it. I don't remember how much it cost. It was probably anywhere from 95 to 120, but I've made probably five or six grand just because I have that tool and then some cheap gauges. So if you want to make some money this upcoming summer, invest in some AC stuff and you'll make some money. Just make sure that you're very, very thorough with replacing seals and finding your leaks because you don't want to have to come back and redo everything because it really sucks. Trust me. If you have a service truck and you do not have a tank that you dump your waste oil in, I recommend getting something like this. It has a plug on it on both ends, the pour spout and the, if you want to call it, uh, fill port. Because when you're driving around, you don't want a full oil container just splashing and dumping oil everywhere. So probably get like three or four of these things. I don't do a lot of oil changes. I don't really like doing them. Um, when you're doing mobile stuff, it's just not even really worth your time to do oil changes in my opinion because you can't really make a whole lot it's a lot quicker whenever they take it to a shop um you know i'll change i'll change oil and equipment i'll do services on equipment that's different that's a little bit of a specialty thing but when it comes to small cars and stuff like that i try to kind of avoid it last compartment i have a sledgehammer um i don't know what size this thing is uh, it's not crazy big, but you know, it's good for uh, knocking in pins or knocking out pins. It's good for, you know, whatever. Um, so one thing I did not show you guys that I think is absolutely awesome. This bed actually has integrated light switches. It's like a pressure switch right here. So whenever you open the door, it releases that switch and it turns lights on inside of the bed. They're not wired in yet. I would love to show you guys once they are wired in because I'm super excited about them. Um, I'm going to convert them all to LED as well. So it's super bright. I'm a sucker for lights. We have a light bar. This bar, this light right here is coming off. So is the other side. I'm going to put pods on it because those are hideous. But that light bar is a concave one. It's pretty nice. Um, I don't know what the width is. This mirror is off of um, uh, Amazon, just the chrome caps. And then I had them paint matched to the truck. I could not find some that had a white light in here. Uh, I wish I could have because it would have matched my um, clearance lights so those are all white leds and they are clear lenses because i'm a sucker for clear lenses i need a bumper for the truck i'm thinking about doing a like winch bumper or something um, and having it paint matched and then doing clear headlights if you guys enjoyed this video if you want to see anything else um, you know put it in the comments um, if you want to make fun of my terrible camera skills because i'm always having the camera like down here can't even see my sit my face i apologize um you know what i'm gonna show you guys back here really quick i forgot so back here we have my floor jack i want to get a couple more of these um it's just harbor freight uh i got a creeper and some uh six ton floor jacks by harbor freight super skeptical when i bought those floor jacks or not the floor jacks the um jack stands because i've heard all these bad things about harbor freight jack stands but I went overkill with the six ton um, and I only use it for smaller cars and small trucks. And if I was to lift something like this here, um, I would probably double up on my, I would probably double up on my jacks. You know, so if I'm just lifting up the front, I'll use four jack stands. So if that way one of them fails, I'm still got to fail safe. But yeah, you guys, I'm super stoked. Um, I'm willing to take any kind of advice anybody has for me on running a mobile mechanic business. I am so new to this, um, but I'm very, very motivated. So if there's any mobile mechanics out there, any mechanics in general that have any business tips, any ideas, any kind of marketing or advertising ideas, please hit me up. Um, you know, I'm willing to learn everything that I possibly can. There's a lot of smart people out there and I'm hoping that some of you guys are going to enjoy this video, seeing 
you know, what I did with this truck. And I'll also post some pictures on here of what it looked like before. So everything that I did was funded by me. Um, I bought the truck for $14,500, which is a pretty good, pretty good price. Uh, the bed was 2,500. The paint on the truck itself on the cab, I think it came out to around 5,500 to six grand. That was labor and paint. Um, and the rims, I paid 39.95. That was with uh, shipping and everything. That was just for the rims though. That was not with spacers and tires. The tires were, I think 1,800 or 1,900 after tax. And then you have to add the wheel spacers in the back. Those were 200, 250. Um, so in the tires and rims, I want to say I was probably in them close to around 6,000. I know it's probably not quite that, but it's very, very close. Um, but yeah, this thing's awesome. I love it. If you guys see me around, you know, give me a holler, honk your horn, wave. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching.